Hello everybody, this is Matt from Megalomobile, and welcome to part one of this mini-series, Let's Make Solitaire in Unity. Solitaire is a classic card game from the 1700s that has seen its fair share of video game adaptations. It first appeared as an 8-bit Atari game, and a version was included on every edition of Microsoft Windows up until Windows 7. If you Google Solitaire, a playable game is embedded within the search results page. With so many different versions, several coding solutions are available. So, as part of this challenge, I am going to use none of them. This means that the implementation we create in this series will be a unique version that plays specifically on functionality provided by the Unity game engine. But, it also means that it will not be the cleanest or most concise implementation possible. I did not set out to make the most cohesive, refactored, or neatest version of Solitaire, but instead I treated this project like a game jam. Whilst I did have a loose plan of what I wanted to create, I did not spend much time planning out the exact design of the software, so from a software engineering perspective, it is a bit of a mess. However, Solitaire is not the most complicated game, so I have confidence that we'll get a half-decent version that we can make together and hopefully learn something along the way. A word of warning, I will explain what I'm doing as we go along, but we will be doing a fair amount of juggling arrays and lists, so having a basic understanding of them is probably a prerequisite to your enjoyment of this series. Additionally, I'd recommend that you've taken the time to do some basic Unity tutorials, as although this is not tricky stuff, it is not aimed at an absolute novice either. Each episode will contain links to any assets used, and as usual, all the scripts and Unity packages are available in the description. You can follow along, download the individual Unity packages for each episode, skip ahead and download the complete package, or even play the current version that we're creating in this series in a browser. Let's get started. Before we start building Solitaire and Unity, we need to be aware of the basic rules of the game. The version we're building is the basic Klondike version. It's played with a standard 52 card deck, which is shuffled, and then partially dealt into seven piles from left to right. Each pile contains one more card than the last, and only the final card in each pile is dealt face up. The remainder of the deck is placed face down at the top of the playfield. The aim of the game is to move all the cards from the seven spaces in the bottom row to the four spaces in the top row. Cards on the bottom row may be sequentially built down by alternate colors from king to ace, and the top row is built up by suit ace to king. Only kings can be moved to empty spaces on the bottom row, only aces can be moved to empty spaces on the top row. Stacks of cards on the bottom row can carry the cards beneath them when they're moved to another space on the bottom row, and if the back of the card is exposed on the bottom row, then that card may be flipped over to end to play. The remaining cards from the deck are made available to the player in different ways depending on the version that you're playing, but we will start with the most popular and maybe add additional functionality later. In this version, the player may deal three cards at a time from the top deck face up, but can only access the last card to use in the game. We will place no limits on the number of redeals. Additionally, if a player double clicks a card and it is eligible to enter the top row, it should automatically fly up there. We are starting this project from scratch, so the first thing we need to do is create a brand new Unity project. I'm calling mine Let's Make Solitaire, but you can call yours whatever you want. The important thing is that you set the template to 2D, as this is going to be a 2D game. Once Unity has loaded, hop on over to the game tab and select your desired aspect ratio. I have gone with 16.9, as it is the most common aspect ratio for computer monitors. Instead of adding a background image, I am just going to tint the background colour generated by my camera. To do this, select the main camera and click on the background colour. I have made mine felt green for that classic solitaire look. Whilst you're here, double check that your camera is set to orthographic mode and check the Z position of the transform is set to negative 10 world units. We're going to need some assets for this game, and I got my playing card sprites from opengameart.org which is an excellent resource. The cards I'm using are listed as being in the public domain, and the pack contains both PNGs and vector file formats. We will only need the PNGs. Once downloaded and unzipped, the card can be dragged straight into the Unity editor. I've made a folder called Sprites to house them. Unfortunately, this deck did not come with a card back, so I, I had to look elsewhere. The Pixabay is another great place to find royalty-free assets, and I settled on this design for my card backs. I resized it and tinted it red in an image editor. You can make your own, or you can use mine. All the assets are linked in the description. This can be added to the Sprites folder. The last asset I created myself, as it is just a simple rectangle that indicates where the piles of cards can go. I drew this myself, as it was just a simple shape, and you're welcome to use mine if you want to. Next, we can add some game objects to the scene. The first one I have labeled deck, the second top, and the third bottom. Adding the rectangle to the scene by dragging it from the sprites folder to the scene shows that it is a little big. There are a few ways to resize it, but for now, I'm just going to set the scale to 0.4 in the X and Y axis. Then we build the scene as we want it to appear. I used world units to make my spaces line up neatly, but as I intend to use the location of these rectangles to handle the position of the cards being placed on them, it doesn't need to be accurate. I just prefer the look of it. I renamed the rectangles sequentially starting with zero, so I can keep track of which is which easily. 
This will make more sense if I have to link them to arrays or lists, which I am planning on doing later. I then set the four top positions as children of the top game object, and the seven bottom positions as children of the bottom game object. Make sure that the transforms of the top and bottom game objects are reset before you do this, as it could cause headaches later if you don't. I then add a rectangle to the deck position, chart it to the deck game object, and switch out its sprite for the back of the card picture that I created earlier. This is going to be the button that deals cards from the deck, so I've called it deck button. I don't want to have to create 52 different cards, so I'm going to create a prefab that can handle all of that for me. Whenever we deal a card, we can just deal a copy of this prefab and update the sprite depending on whatever the card is meant to be. I want the card to be able to handle this itself, so I'll create a new script, update sprite, and attach it to the card game object, although we'll come back to that later. As pretty as the play field is looking, the game doesn't really do anything yet, so we need to start introducing some functionality. I create a game object called Solitaire Game to handle my logic, and the first component that I add is a Solitaire script. I also want this game object to handle any input from the player, so I create a second script called User Input and attach that too. The Solitaire script is going to handle the gameplay, so I need it to be able to do a few key things. It will generate a deck of cards, shuffle the deck, and deal the cards out correctly. I'm going to use arrays, loops, and lists to handle a lot of this, so the first thing I need is an array of suits. There will never be more suits than clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades, so I can make this a static string array. Public static string array suits equals new string array C, D, H, and S for a clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. Public static string array values equals new string array, ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. I also create a public list of type string, and I'm gonna call that deck. As I will be automatically generating the deck from these arrays of strings, I create a new public static method that returns a list of strings called generate deck. Public static list of type string, generate deck. List of type string, new deck, equals a new list of type string. For each string, S in suits, then for each string V in values, new deck dot add S plus V. This concatenates the suit string to the value string and adds it to the list of cards. Then I can return new deck. I then want to create a method that handles the start of my game. So I create a new method, public void play cards. Within that, I can call the method we just created, deck equals generate deck. To test if the cards are all contained within the deck, we can loop through it and print the contents of the deck to the console. For each string card in deck, print card. We can then call the play cards method from the start method. Saving the scripts and attaching to Unity, we can move back over to the editor and hit play. The console then fills up with printed statements representing each card in the deck, suited in order from CA, which is the ace of clubs, C2, the two of clubs, and so on in order all the way to the 52nd entry, which is SK, the King of Spades. Next, we want to shuffle the cards. Shuffling is a bit of a rabbit hole topic, especially when it comes to accuracy, and there are a number of methods of generating the most random shuffle possible, but this is just solitaire, it's not an online casino. We will go with a quick and easy shuffle. The one we are using is based on the Fishy Yates shuffle, and credit where credit is due. I turned to Stack Overflow for help getting this right. I used a code snippet uploaded by a user called Grenade and edited by Yui Kaim. A link is in the description. We create a method called shuffle of an arbitrary type T that takes in a list, where the thing was list are also arbitrary as an argument we call list. Void shuffle T takes in list T, which we're gonna call list. We can use the length or count of the list and randomly reorder it. System.random, random, equals new system.random, int n equals list.count, while n is greater than one, do the following. int k equals random.next n, decrement n, t temp equals list at location k, list at location k equals list at location n, list at location n equals temp. Then, back in the play cards method, all we need to do is call the shuffle method and give it the deck. Now, if we save, go back to the editor and hit play, we can see that all the cards are jumbled up nicely and that we get a different order each time we play the game. That's it for part one. Next time we will assign sprites to the cards, sort the cards into their correct piles and deal them out just like in a real game of solitaire. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit like, please hit subscribe and feel free to leave a message in the comments. I'll catch you next time.